Good morning. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome Rudolf Sharping to the Pentagon as Minister of Defense. He has been here on quite a few occasions in the past, but not in this capacity. Uh, he's a new colleague, but I might say he's an old friend. Uh, for many years, we have attended the uh, Veracunda Conference in uh, Munich, and each of us has been called upon to uh, speak in our prior capacity, certainly. The defense relationship between the United States and German, Germany rather, is fundamental to the strength of the NATO alliance itself and to the security of Europe. At our meeting today, we reviewed a range of important bilateral uh, alliance issues. We discussed the Defense Capabilities Initiative that emerged from the Norfolk Conference and the relationship between the core capabilities of mobility, effective engagement, survivability, and sustainability, and the German Defense Review that Minister Sharping has launched. We discussed next year's Washington Summit to mark the 50th anniversary of NATO's founding and to welcome the new members. We reiterated our commitment to NATO's enlargement, the open door policy, but stressed that the new members must meet uh, high standards. We discussed NATO's nuclear policy, and I made it clear that the United States opposes any change in this policy because we believe that the current doctrine serves to preserve the peace and to enhance deterrence. In particular, the Alliance's nuclear forces continue to fulfill an essential role by ensuring uncertainty in the mind of any aggressor about the nature of the Allies' response to military aggression. And because the strategy continues to serve NATO's interests, there's no reason to consider changing it. In our discussion, Minister Sharping explained the German position and said that Germany has no intention to question these core elements of NATO's strategy and that Germany remains prepared to contribute to the nuclear element of NATO's strategy. And I welcome these statements. Uh, finally, we discussed the current situation in Bosnia and Kosovo, two places where German contributions are helping to restore stability. In Kosovo, we agreed that both the Serb and Albania sides must show restraint while moving toward a political settlement. Uh, our meetings today uh, were warm, they're productive. I look forward to working with Minister Sharping in the spirit that makes Germany and the United States strong friends and allies. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we talked about uh, the bilateral relations between uh, Germany and the United States, and uh, that is a very solid, a very good uh, relationship, uh, also uh, indispensable for uh, our future. Uh, based on uh, common values, based on common interests, uh, based on a common heritage, NATO is uh, the most successful alliance uh, we ever seen in we have ever seen in history. So, uh, the main goal of uh, our government in Germany is to strengthen NATO and its cohesion, and uh, to make uh, NATO uh, uh, able to face the challenges uh, for the next century. Uh, we're expecting a successful summit here at Washington, uh, not only in strengthening NATO and its cohesion, but enlarge it too. Uh, after that enlargement by three new members, we need a phase of consolidation within NATO, so uh, that uh, we have to combine an open door policy on the one side with that phase of consolidation on the other side. Uh, concerning uh, international uh, issues, uh, there's, uh, we are fully agreeing that uh, uh, for example, in Bosnia, for example, in the Kosovo, we, we will be engaged uh, to solve and, and uh, to solve problems and uh, prevent conflicts. Especially in the Kosovo, it's necessary to take that small window of opportunity, uh, which is given by uh, uh, the milosevic holbrook agreement on the one side and uh, the development in the last few days on the other side. But there are some risks. Uh, because of Milosevic and his policy on the one side and uh, the uh, UCK on the other side. Uh, that is why uh, we are establishing not only the USCE mission to verify that agreement on the ground, but also to have an air verification and to have an extraction force led by France uh, and uh, within the command chain of NATO. Uh, concerning NATO strategy, we agree uh, uh, commonly that NATO is not only uh, not only have to face the challenges of the next century, but uh, NATO uh, must be developed uh, in, in terms of interoper interoperability, uh, de deployability, maintainability, sustainability of its forces and uh, its engagements. Uh, concerning the no first use uh, uh, 
point, uh, I uh, explained that uh, the German government on the United Nations level uh, for the whole globe is following uh, the, uh, the vision of a nuclear uh, weapons-free world. Uh, but on the other side, we are debating uh, about uh, NATO and its strategy. I made clear that uh, any conclusion must be drawn in consensus. And uh, I also made clear that there is no intention to take unilateral decisions uh, which has an impact uh, on the, the security of the alliance. Uh, and as uh, Secretary Cohen uh, said, there is no intention in my government uh, to question any core element of NATO's uh, strategy, including uh, the fact uh, that uh, uh, nuclear forces uh, play a fundamental uh, political role uh, although the necessity to use them may be extremely remote, as it is written down in, in uh, the uh, actual uh, NATO strategy. Uh, I think uh, um, that was a very fruitful um, and uh, bilateral talk uh, among uh, partners who know each other uh, for a long time. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to having uh, close contacts uh, with the United States and with my colleague Bill Cohen and uh, among the two governments. Um, Mr. Sharping, might I ask, you seemed a bit embarrassed yesterday when this, when this uh, issue broke about the no first use of nuclear weapons. Both you and the Secretary have said that the German government has no intention of questioning the core, the core policy of NATO over nuclear weapons. Does your government, however, intend to formally push, to formally push for a change in NATO, no, uh, NATO first use policy of nuclear weapons? Well, in, in my understanding, NATO uh, itself is a no first use organization uh, for common security because we are saying uh, all our weapons, all our weapons, uh, we will not use first, only in the case of defense. And as I said, uh, and it's our common understanding that uh, the nuclear element within NATO strategy uh, plays an eminent political role, uh, and uh, it will play uh, such an, uh, it will play such a role in the future too, because uh, it's a difference if you are looking on the, uh, a global level, and if you are looking on the strategic concept of NATO, because we have to act within a world which is not the world we wish, but it's a world uh, we've, we've, we have to deal with. Are you saying then that you, you will or will not formally push for a change in NATO leadership? As, as I said, there will, there will some talks about it, uh, but at least a, a decision and consensus and uh, based on, on that main goal to strengthen NATO and its cohesion. Uh, and uh, not to, to go any way uh, Germany on its own. Uh, I, I saw a statement saying uh, that the security situation for Germany is a unique one in, uh, in, German's hist in Germany's history. That's right. In the future, we will be surrounded by partners and allies, which is the first time in German history since uh, many, many centuries. I take it you're not but, willing uh, to create not, a rift. Yes, I understand, but we are not debating uh, a German security strategy, we are debating a, a NATO's uh, strategy, strategic concept, and uh, that's a different thing. We alternate questions, German and American, so the next question will be from the German side. Yes. Um, Secretary Cohen, um, <coughs> Secretary Sharpie made clear he wants no changes in the core, uh, in the core security elements, while uh, uh, Foreign Minister Fischer made a move toward NATO Secretary General. Now, in your view, who is speaking for the German government here? I think it's up to the uh, German government to articulate uh, and, and uh, explain who is speaking for it itself. Uh, based on uh, my conversations with Minister Sharping, uh, I think that we have a meeting of the minds that the strategic uh, concept uh, is uh, critical for NATO's uh, security that the strategic concept as far as the nuclear component uh, should uh, not be altered it has uh, worked well to date. We believe it continues to serve a vital uh, security uh, uh, purpose uh, for the NATO organization and uh, should not be changed. Uh, whether or not there is a debate at other levels of the, the German government is clear from uh, our perspective that we should adhere to the policy we currently have and not change it. 
Secretary Cohen, a, a question about the U.S. defense uh, spending. Uh, is it now generally conceded that the Pentagon's budget is underfunded, and will it take a significant increase in defense spending to correct the readiness problems that you're now experiencing? I think we've indicated, uh, Jamie, in the past, uh, the President met with the, uh, the Joint Chiefs and also with the SINCs uh, back in August, uh, and it became clear uh, during the course of that meeting uh, and even prior uh, that we needed to have uh, uh, some relief from the, the budgetary constraints in order to make sure that readiness does not uh, fall below levels that are acceptable and that we continue on our modernization pace. Uh, we are now in the process of putting together our budget. We're working very closely with uh, OMB and uh, hope to have that budget prepared by the, uh, the end of, certainly by the, uh, the middle of December, if not the end of December. But we're looking uh, to make sure that the readiness does not fall below acceptable levels. And the President has indicated he wanted uh, me to work with uh, OMB and, uh, and the Congress to make sure that uh, we are funded at levels uh, that uh, meet our, uh, our needs. Just a quick follow-up. Will you uh, be proposing a reform or uh, an increase in retirement pays for military personnel? As I've indicated, uh, the, uh, the retirement issue is one that is uh, par of paramount interest to our uh, men and women in uniform. Uh, pay and retirement are two of the top issues, as well as operational tempo. Uh, we intend to address um, both the, all, all three issues, but certainly the pay and the retirement. Yes. Um, a question for Minister Sharping. Uh, do you consider what you described yesterday as an irritation to be resolved? And will you address when you come home tomorrow this issue in the cabinet meeting? And will you talk directly to Ms. Minister um, Fisher to, uh, to provide further clarification? Well, uh, uh, we will meet tomorrow uh, at Berlin, and uh, I think that will be a good chance to talk with uh, my colleague Fisher. <coughs> Tony. Minister Sharpie, on defense consolidations, what are your views about transatlantic consolidations between United States and German defense companies? Are there many opportunities you see for consolidation? Well, I see some, uh, some opportunities, but um, uh, I, I gave some information uh, to Bill Cohen uh, saying that uh, during the last uh, WEU Ministers' Council, we decided about a master plan to develop a European armaments agency, which is an important step on the demand side. Uh, and uh, also, we are pressing on the point to, to restructure the European defense industry, uh, which uh, is a little bit difficult because uh, some countries uh, uh, do have uh, private-owned uh, defense industries, other state-owned uh, defense industries. Uh, and uh, in my view, it's necessary to go, to go ahead uh, in restructuring uh, the European defense industry. Both uh, European Armaments Agency on the one side, a restructured European defense industry on the other side, are core elements of a European defense and security identity within NATO. And that is, uh, in, in, in our view, a very important point, that we do not want to have any element which is weakening NATO, so we do not want to have uh, double structures uh, between WEU or among WEU and, and NATO. Uh, separable but not separate. That's the point. Yes, right there. The, uh, Secretary uh, Sharping seemed to play down the differences a little bit by saying all our weapons will not be used first. I understood Secretary Cohen's uh, remarks yesterday that uh, this option should remain, that it uh, has been proved to be worthwhile. So uh, a question to both of you, how do these different readings fit together? I well, obviously don't understand the sophistication. The distinction should not be uh, one that's too metaphysical uh, to describe. Uh, on the one hand, uh, Minister Sharping has indicated uh, that NATO as uh, an organization uh, is a defensive uh, organization, is not uh, designed or intended to be used uh, as an offensive uh, military uh, organization. It's primarily designed to defend the, uh, uh, the members uh, of, uh, of NATO itself. And that is the sense in which uh, Minister Sharping referred to a uh, policy of defensive use. But within that concept, we uh, reserve uh, the right 
uh, to uh, call upon whatever uh, armaments we have that would uh, protect and preserve the uh, the integrity of the uh, the members of that uh, of that organization. So, on the one hand, it's defensive in nature; it is not intended to attack. It is intended to defend, and how we uh, choose to defend uh, will continue to call upon all armaments, including nuclear, if necessary. And that's a judgment that uh, NATO would reserve for itself. Suzanne. Uh, Mr. Secretary, are the uh, U.S. forces in the Gulf going to have a quiet Thanksgiving? Well, a lot depends upon uh, how uh, much progress is going to be made uh, on the part of uh, the Iraqis cooperating with UNSCOM. And uh, we have to, we are following it uh, day by day very closely. And uh, uh, thus far, we've seen um, the Iraqis uh, claim that they have uh, fully uh, cooperated. I think that uh, is clearly in doubt. It's clearly in doubt in the minds of the UNSCOM inspectors. They have uh, asked for and demanded a number of uh, documents. They have yet to receive them. They have been told that they either have been destroyed or they're, quote, uh, irrelevant. Uh, I don't believe that uh, Iraq should be in the position of uh, declaring unilaterally that documents are irrelevant uh, to the needs and requests uh, of the, uh, the UNSCOM inspectors. So we will continue to follow it, but much depends upon uh, the uh, level and degree of cooperation on the part of the Iraqis. Are you maintaining the uh, increased number of aircraft there for the time being? For the time being, there, there will be uh, an increased level of um, uh, aircraft. There is a, a changeover taking place uh, with our uh, carrier battle groups, uh, but nonetheless, uh, we have uh, added additional uh, aircraft to the region, and they will remain for the time being. Last question. Mr. Mr. Secretary, how did you uh, answer the German request for maintaining funding for the Leeds air defense system? Uh, we indicated that it's still under review. We understand the importance uh, that uh, Germany uh, uh, and uh, Italy uh, place upon this particular program. Uh, we've looked at the uh, costs of the program. We're trying to find uh, uh, ways in which perhaps uh, it's, uh, it can be uh, reformulated in a way that's acceptable to all parties and affordable. So that's something that's going to continue to be discussed. We'll have uh, more talks on this at lunch. We have Mr. Jack uh, Gansler, who is also who has met with his counterpart in Germany to discuss this, and so we think we're hopeful we can resolve it soon. Thank you very much. Uh, we've got. Secretary Cohen, you, uh, there is a meeting today uh, with Iraqi opposition uh, leaders in London with a representative of the U.S. government. Many of those groups have said they don't exactly understand what it is the United States is really trying to offer them. Can you help define what the United States is willing to do? to support the Iraqi opposition? Well, first, the United States is going to be working with the key members of Congress uh, in order to uh, work our way through uh, the congressional uh, action that was taken by uh, proposing and appropriating some $97 million uh, to uh, work with opposition groups. As I indicated uh, last week, uh, the purpose would be to uh, take this step by step to make sure that we are not uh, proceeding with uh, great haste and without uh, a serious evaluation of the uh, opposition groups to make sure that they are broad-based uh, and support uh, democratic reforms and uh, have uh, uh, credibility and reliability uh, in uh, putting such a, an op opposition group together. That's going to take some time. It's not uh, something that's going to be resolved in the short term. So we're uh, looking at this carefully. We'll work with uh, key members of Congress to, uh, to make that determination. Thank you very much. Thank you.